We are so excited and so thrilled to introduce you all to Nancy Moonstar. She is such an incredible woman. She's a psychologist and a men's intimacy expert. So Leah and I are excited to just pick her brain about her work with men. She is in service to shift awareness in the realm of emotional and physical intimacy for men from all walks of life. She felt called to inspire men on their journey to get to the heart of what truly matters in intimacy so that they understand and connect meaningfully to their partners. Welcome to the Sex Reimagined podcast, where sex is shame-free and pleasure forward. Let's get into the show. Welcome, Nancy. We're so thrilled you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh. Well, um, where, where would you like me to begin? You want to know how I got in this? Yeah, let's let's hear sort of your Genesis story. Um, <laughs> it, it found me and it called to me. And I guess my heart really felt for men not being able to make mistakes and not being given a chance to recover and sort of being made fun of and being dissed and put in very hard positions. So I just felt called to stand for men and with men to help them. Uh, I also noticed that the big splashes in the media about sexual issues and boundaries really had to do with intimacy problems and issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought rather than marinate in the problem, I wanted to help bring about some greater something <laughs> to men. And um, there's other threads here. So maybe about 20 years ago, I, as a psychologist, I, I started getting a lot of questions from men about their sexuality. And to get relicensed every year, you have to, um, every two years, you take continuing education training. And so I started gearing my more towards men and towards their sexuality and uh, just educating myself on it. At the same time, <laughs> I was online dating and realized how much I had to learn about the male and the female uh, grand union for a greater purpose. And there was so much that I learned and then so much that I yearned for from men. For example, I wanted so badly for a man just to invite me into a conversation about sex and it wasn't done and it was awkward and often I was sort of the one that led starting with you know sexual health questions and um and I've come to to figure out that see guys are the lead with sex just like women are the lead with emotions mm -hmm. so he's bringing sex to her and I'll say her but I'm using the paradigm of the yin for her and whatever orientation or fluidity you're taking so he's really the one who's guiding and leading and she's following generally. Now, just it's an interplay of everything, the feminine, and the masculine, and the yin and the yang. In my training too, I found a wonderful professor from probably GW in, in DC, um, talked about sort of building a woman slowly through foreplay. And, you know, foreplay is something that's left out. And when people get training on sexuality, it's very biologically oriented. It's not about dating. It's not about re the relationship. Relating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or and, getting busy and being good at it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's lots of techniques. So um, the one thing I gained from him, I cannot think of his name. So he had sort of maybe a couple stages. And what I did was I expanded into five stages to make it easier for men to understand because men usually do better with structure and just tell me like it is, you know, tell me, tell me what to do. So backing up one of the keys this professor taught was do not penetrate a woman until she is either a nine or a 10 on that one to 10 scale. So she's got to be very ready. And of course, so many women just sort of allow or go along with penetration at whatever point. And men don't know that they don't know to signal him and she doesn't know that he doesn't. So, so what I wanted to do was give people a structure to talk about it, to bring it in and to work with all of these different phases. So I have conversation, rituals, touch, just neutral and central, and then sexual touch and penetration. Well, 
I have a couple other threads that came in here. So from the time of being tiny, I had boundary invasions from boys in the neighborhood to a male babysitter, overcame that not until I was in my 30s and had other invasions. And I had quite an explosive one where I changed my last name to Moonstar as an adult and became committed to following my intuition and where I was guided because I didn't that day. Mm -hmm. And I ended up helping so many people and I continue to help people with trauma and overcoming uh, different events and different invasions. And um, I, I knew there was something bigger for me in this. So I thought, I want to take this to the biggest level possible. W what is my purpose here? What am I to do with this? How am I <laughs> using this? So I'm using my 360 degree experience to let men know that I've known all sides of it. Who's a victim? Who's the victimizer? No one and everyone. Yeah. And, and when we point the finger and we say, it's just guys, that, that's, we can't rise together. We all rise together. There isn't one aspect of a gender that rises and the other doesn't, all, all together. So um, that's kind of my movement that the Times write, R-I-G-H-T, for this to happen because I'm finding men hungry for this information and women, um, women, I love working with women and <laughs> they're so collaborative. They're easy. They're chatters. They, you know, they're out there, but somebody has got to work with men. And I thought <laughs> I, you know, I, and I, I miss them if I don't work with them <laughs> and I want to understand them and I want to give them th that knowledge and also knowledge from a female perspective and it is a pleasure and an honor that men trust me. And I get asked very, but very respectful. It's very rare that it's not respectful. And all of us know in this field, when we run into that, we just block or dismiss or, you know, let go of that. But um, I get very sincere questions and very open about their sexuality and how to perform and how to please a woman or their partner the right way. And so that all of that kind of came together and, you know, that's, that's what I'm about. So beautiful. Mm, so beautiful. So Nancy, I'm kind of curious, were there any like obstacles for you or any healing that you had to go on personally in order to, you know, come to this work with men or not? Yeah. Yes. There, there certainly was. Um, I didn't realize I carried hostility earlier in my adulthood from unresolved violations. And fortunately, I had a girlfriend who noticed it and said something to me and asked me, because uh, she too had. So that, probably that was a, a huge jump and leap for me to be able to begin that healing. And I used so many different modalities. And there were um, other events that took place. And one of them was at work. 20 some years ago. And um, that assault sort of trajected me out of a life that wasn't working, mm. uh, ended my marriage and ended my relying on logic mm. and um, or intellect or uh, what's the loyalty and commit, you know, doing things mm -hmm. because, you know, it's that you, you, you power through it. Mm -hmm. And I started, I was committed. I knew immediately I have to commit to my intuition. That was really um, what this was about and that, that I had a greater purpose. And I was being a seeker my whole life. I was just determined I was going to find it. And uh, I remember at one point in my practice, every client I had experienced a rape mm -hmm. and I was privileged to be able to help them through resolving and neutralizing because the ideal with trauma is you don't forget anything but you make it uh, a a more normalized memory and more neutralized so it doesn't run you anymore and because of that of course i was able to help so many people and understand my life was very hard i had a, a lot of hard things happen to me <laughs> but those things have given me a special lens and credentials to help others going through such great difficulty and to understand the men and why they would do things that weren't right. Um, because if, if you don't know about your own intimacy, have an intimate relationship with yourself first and then with another, 
if it's not talked about, it's not taught, uh, we don't really have a way of, of bringing without secrecy and shame this, this equally important part of ourselves called sex. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I just, I realized it was a tough territory. Um, I, I, I've met with uh, people who are surprised, including men. One guy not too long ago, um, oh, are you a surrogate? And I'm like, no, I, you know, I don't sleep with anybody. I don't have sex with anybody. My specialty is verbal communication and emotional depth because those are really left out of that space between the physical Mars and the emotional Venus coming together. And we've got a whole background of nonverbal sex, and then we're adding some verbal to it. So I kind of see that's what I'm bringing about. Because if you move through my stages slowly and gradually and with awareness, um, you'll have passion and love making the rest of your interested life. Mm, will you break down these five yeah. stages for us? I'm so curious. Sure. sure. So um, the, the first stage is conversation. Why? Because, again, I'm going to use the paradigm of she. Because she needs you to see her for who she is and get her intellectually. If you don't get her for who she is as a being, whole being, and, and women before they get into sex, they need to move into it, into their body. And a simple example would be is when she gets out of the shower uh, and when he gets out of the shower, if he's, they're both in the buff. If she reaches for his member, what's he going to do? He's going to get excited. He's yeah. going to get excited. He's going to be like, great. Totally. Gonna work right. right. <laughs> Every Thank <body>. you. <laughs> you got it, baby. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You He'll want some like, of that? Yeah. So, and if, but in turn, if he grabs her yoni, if he grabs her labia and her, her vaginal area, she first will sort of flinch and like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, and, and she has to be brought into her sexuality so it's it's a different process mm -hmm. and testosterone is there for a reason we, we're we're surviving because testosterone is very directly related to making sex happen and estrogen is more spherical and more relational and more collaborative and not as direct and makes it interesting so conversation and and just it can be on anything but instead of saying things like how was your day you say what's the most important thing about your day you'd like me to know mm. Mm. different mm -hmm. yeah yeah that opens me right up i mean the, the yeah. difference is immediate yeah. immediate <laughs> it's way more way more engaging and, way and enthralling more engaging. like oh yeah you want to know the most important part it of makes day? you think and then you want to share a great yeah. question Love great that. reframe yeah. so so the whole point is sharing and i also teach uncommon responding so that's where a guy, see the normal common responding, a guy's going to respond with something in his head, something mm -hmm. he's already thinking, an association or a story. Mm -hmm. Uncommon responding is you listen to what she said and pick up a bullet and ask her more about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so those are a couple ideas. Uh, the other, if you want to create conversation is ask questions. Women love questions. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite this? What did you notice that you really liked about that? Do you like, and they like all women like alternatives. <laughs> um, do you like lighting really bright or do you like it soft? Do you like the outdoors or in, you know, so you want water? Do you want tea? Do you want something alcoholic? Mm -hmm. Uh, the other other fun things are the five love language tests and those 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 things like that that actually tell you and move you right into intimacy mm -hmm. so that you start the conversation around romance and connection and how you feel loved if it's a first meetup and you're doing conversation i always encourage come up with your number one question that encapsulates something about sex but you can't say sex directly the first time and right away so you keep it conservative and just say, um, what, what did your dad teach you about romance? Or what actor do you think is really romantic, sexy, and intellectual all in one? So, so you're not just loading up the plate with a sex talk right away, but you're bringing her in and you're also going to find out what she finds. Or if she can talk about it, if she can allow you to invite her in. Uh, yeah, I love how you're you're like take you're basically teaching men and guiding them to to kind of come to the outer edge of a woman and then kind of 
infiltrate in closer into the core, which is for, for the majority of vulva owners is going to be a better approach. Yeah. Indirect contact mm -hmm. versus direct contact yeah. is, um, yeah. is the way that we open. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, allowing yeah. the, the flower to just mm -hmm. do its unfolding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, conversation and get, she feels heard, seen and connected. That's the first connection. Mm -hmm. the, the next one is rituals because rituals are transitions. So we can use a simple ritual like having a drink together, a meal together, a hug and a kiss when we come together, eye gazing, breathing. I teach different breathing techniques, even hands on each other's heart and the figure eight imaging that goes on with tantric breathing. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do yab yum if you want, even with clothes on, but, mm -hmm. but, a, but a, a ritual doesn't start out with sex. It starts out with doing something together and it's structured, but it transitions into sex because a woman doesn't usually move boom into sex. So you want to transition in there and it's a fun thing too. It's a yeah. great, great thing. So one of the first things I teach because so many women are exhausted when they come in and come together is work with her on breathing uh, hold her hands. If you can make eye contact and have her imitate you breathe. And you say, breathe in, out, come on and out. And if for fun, you need to time it because she's going to take more than five minutes, maybe, mm. but she'll finally, okay. So you're breathing in a syncopated fashion, this way then there's other syncopations which are where you're facing each other and you're breathing with in and out mm -hmm. another syncopated is where one breathes in and the other breathes and so you're breathing and you can even touch lips and syncopation mm, yeah, she breathes in that. and you breathe into her and then she, you breathe in and she breathes out and into you. so you, i know you know these techniques so it's a powerful one great yeah one that favorites. alternating breathing where you yeah. like you're breathing in each, each other. other's breath Gorgeous. Another technique is if she's sitting across from you or she's tense or you don't know what's going on, imitate her breathing. Watch ah, I love that. And what does that do, Nancy? Is that modeling her tension? That syncs you with her. Okay. And your pheromones are already intermingling. Mm -hmm. So energetically, there's already a connection and she's feeling you. So if you're grounded in your body and calm, that's affecting what's going on. And her even noticing that mm -hmm. is, is a great help. And then that gives you a chance to figure out where do I start? Well, I just start maybe with breathing yeah. and then go from there. Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, when you do a ritual, such as eye gazing, I always like to start with like three minutes. That's a long time, mm -hmm. no talking and just gazing at each other's eyes. It's not staring, you know, some people mm -hmm. are afraid of that. It's, you know, it's gazing gently and you might giggle you might feel deep connection. You might have tears. It's so touching and time it for one and a half to three minutes so that you really have to get in it and not move away from it. Cause there are 10, we like, we fill empty space. Right. And so sometimes there's sort of talk with the ritual. That's fine. That can be your conversation starter, moving into a ritual rather quickly. You don't have to have a long, you can switch it up, which women like got to switch it up. Yeah. And the next is touch. And I break down this third stage into neutral touch and then sensual touch, still not touching the yoni, the labia, the breasts, the penis, his nipples, which are just as sensitive as women's. Mm -hmm. You're not into that touch at all. You're just into a hug. You're putting your hands on his face, mm -hmm. he on yours. He's doing uh, an air kiss and a, even an angel hug, you know, but, it, but it's beginning to touch in a neutral way where you're connecting. Why? Because you've got to get into the body mm -hmm. and, and women have trouble. So you want to get her in and you want to be in yours and it feels good. This is a wonderful way to come in too. Mm -hmm. So the second phase of this third touch stage is sensual touching. And that's where you might come up behind her when she's at the kitchen sink, which we all spend a lot of time at, right? <laughs> um, and you're putting your arms around her and you're moving close enough in that she's going to feel your body, your whole body up against her. That's sensual. Mm -hmm. You can also do something like spooning because mm -hmm. yes, that's very sensual. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, thank comforting you. and soothing uh, and yummy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're, we're bringing her in and, and you're making sure she's comforted, but she's also excited because a woman needs both of those. Right. Okay. Right. And if it's then, too like, there's a, there's a place where it can get sleepy, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, like, yeah, just kind of dozy where you're not quite in your body, you're kind of floating out into space. So there is that awareness, right? Of yeah. Wanting it to be sensual, just like you said. Yeah, yeah. And, and women, men too, but women love all the sense, the smells, the, what they hear, what they see, what they, you know, all of that. Yeah. So remember that for a woman too. Oh, and for yourself, it's a great yeah. thing to think about. So the sensual touch will build because you'll be touching in the non-X-rated areas. It might be her hips, outside her legs. You can even communicate with her and ask her, where would she like your hands? And if she's afraid or she doesn't have an answer because women don't have answers to these big sexual questions, True. say, how about you take my hand and you put it where you would like me to start? Mm, how nice. about how about you know the hand gliding i think you called hand mm -hmm. writing and I, I she can also ride on the hand or he can ride on her hand mm -hmm. here and we're mapping right we're pleasure mapping we're body mapping and starting to remember where but she changes yeah and women do because the next time you have sex is different different, <laughs> different right. time of the month we different day like different hour different woman yes <laughs> my, my uh, long time teacher used to say women are like the sands of the sahara they yeah. move night to night you know the sand dunes keep moving yeah. what she likes Never last night same. she might hate tonight so yeah. be open and agile yeah. <laughs> stay present to what you're feeling okay, that's yeah. right be in the moment all right so you will feel her move and open to you as you get towards the x-rated areas to the labia to the whole yoni to the vaginal the clitoral area and i'm really big on figure eights and moving around and then moving out away from the x-rated and the center of the bullseye and then back in and even crossing over it and back mm -hmm. out again and watching her and listening to her and communicating to her. And one of the things that is important for a man is to know if she orgasms, often she, he can read her face or hear or tell, but he still wants to know if she's having one and they love making us orgasm. That's, you know, making something happen as guys do, you know, they like to make things happen. Right. They like to produce like results. To fix it. Yes. yes. Let's get there. <laughs> so I like setting up a little communication system where she can either tap you or squeeze. If you're doing doggy stuff, you know, she's squeezing a finger tw once or twice, or she's um, sucking on or wetting or taking a finger and it's wet. And it's, that's her wet or somehow she's letting you know. Yeah, that there's a signal. Yeah, because when we're in the a heat- A tactile passion, signal you're saying. Yeah, yeah love it. It's because you don't necessarily want to go into speech when you're in the no. height of orgasm or just after the afterglow. Mm -hmm. so, so we're moving. So the fourth stage is direct sexual touch where you are touching on the labia area, the breasts, anything goes, the bum, and the same her for you. So- that stage you can bring her and you you can bring anybody to an orgasm if you like or you can edge which bring them up to the edge of orgasm mm -hmm. and and then back down that's a highly aroused state and so as that builds because you're building in a woman like a fire and a man is more like a firecracker he can you know be there and she's very slow and gradual to getting up and you want to build her to a nine or 10 so that she wants you to penetrate. So she wants an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she's hungry for it. Yes. She's and, ready to beg for it. That's right. Right. Best. Right. right. So, <laughs> you so want the yoni to draw the energy like sucking in, you sucking in, in, you know, <laughs> and when you deny her, it's even almost better. And oh then yeah. You finally succumb. And it Ease is just her. like, ah! <laughs> Okay. Yes. <laughs> but to keep her wanting yes, yes we love yeah. anticipation sometimes yeah. anticipation Desire. is like the best i mean it's the best part so, so the um sexual touch is for reading <laughs> it's the next stage the natural stage after you're fully in the body then you're definitely into the sexual realm and experience 
and there's a very primal need met with penetration. Mm -hmm. And we know we don't need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our gay sisters have taught us that and, but they like penetration too. And Mm -hmm. we have lots of toys that we can use. So penetration is a very primal way of experiencing, connecting and surrendering penetration is what what we consider the the ultimate that that's the orgasm that's the um what's the word for the final final thing the final frontier like the um a type of orgasm that you're referring to like the vaginal orgasm versus the clitoral no no it's it's the um climax climax yes (laughs) okay that was gonna be my next guess (laughs) so (laughs) climatic so is right. stage five penetration or climax? Yes. It's yes, penetration. Yes. I, I call it love conversation, it. conversation to penetration. Love it. Cool. Conversation to penetration. Ooh, That's I love fantastic. that iteration. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. The bottom, bottom line with sex for a guy is that you're preparing your partner for orgasm. Because orgasm is signaling that I want penetration. Because again, there's a primal idea of having a penetrative orgasm. Although most women orgasm with clitoral orgasm, Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily with vagina, but um, there's still that climactic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However they come, we'll take them. Yeah. You know, (laughs) we'll take (laughs) them how they come. It doesn't really matter. I mean, (laughs) never met an orgasm I didn't like. So just bring them on. (laughs) (laughs) What a, what a fun bunch of Some are more colorful than others, but you know, hey, they're all good. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I love that. I love that. Just walk that you take men through. It's so important and so empowering too, because it's like, uh, you know, as you said, men really like to have like a map. plan and fix and map yeah. and this is you know i'm gonna get through this stage and this I, stage and, i mean i think we all do because we really grow up in this young environment this is the how we produce things you know this is how we get results and so well, it's nice to have stages it's how our brain learns and then once you have it like embodied then you can begin to you know go beyond that and just in intermingle it all together mm-hmm. yeah i mean i even think that this is a really interesting um step and kind of formula that could be given to teenagers um yes. maybe shifting the penetration piece i mean i think i think we should be empowering our teenagers we know they're going to be sexual we also don't want them to get pregnant and go through a crisis um at a, at a time that they don't have the maturity to handle it but i think what we're missing out on is formulas like this mm-hmm. where we can teach younger people how to flirt how to transition how to play with pleasure how to play with their sexual energy how to stay Mm-hmm. aware of how their partner is experiencing the experience, how they're experiencing the experience, mm-hmm. and to give them more variety of how to pleasure each other that doesn't get them maybe in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I really see some um, really beautiful opportunities just with this lovely map that you've created. And I also love that it slows things down and allows for like a presence, a deeper presence to occur. Mm-hmm. The other thing that comes to mind as you've taught us this really cool system is what obstacles do your clients or students face as they begin to play with these steps? I'm curious um, what kind of the roadblocks are that mm-hmm. they've got to navigate. Well, well, one of the roadblocks for women is giving themselves permission to surrender to pleasure. Because mm. women are really not taught to have pleasure uh, another is when he asks her what she wants in sex, that's, that's too big a question. She won't know the answer. Uh, she doesn't have the languaging around sex. And it has to be a very simple question, such as if I were to start at a sensual place to kiss you right now, right here, where would it be? You know, making it more specific so that she could actually answer it. And not where do you like to be touched because she won't, she's doing the dishes. I liked too how you gave options. You know, I think that's really smart because women are often so full in their heads. You ask them anything. I was just saying that today because I'm packing up about to move. And I was like, I feel like a woman giving birth, you know, and I've done a lot of birth work. So I know you don't ask a woman who's in labor a question. And I feel like a lot of women are so full all the time. So I loved how you framed that. Like, do you want me to start on your inner wrist or to the back of your uh, knee? You know, like right. giving those options. Your neck. 
cheek or your bottom lip. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. That's great. Great. Very useful. So so, um, men are faced with women not being able to tell them what they want. They don't know what she wants. We haven't given anybody the language permission and the languaging of even just having these rich conversations like we're having. So they face the idea that they're the ones that have to lead the conversation. They have to be the lead in these steps like a dance. Mm -hmm. Because on the dance floor, if a man doesn't lead and she tries to lead, it doesn't work. It's awkward. He knows it's awkward. She knows it's, you know, so there are exceptions. And there's also playtime where you switch it up, where you switch roles, but generally he's got to take the lead. And the challenge he faces is he doesn't know how to do that. (laughs) He doesn't understand it. And in today's world where everything's about egalitarian and equality and what, yes, she knows she can initiate sex. Um, but you to one, you know, you're, you're the one that's really got to say, shall I meet you in bed first at eight? Or would you like to get in under covers? And then I come in at eight 15, you know, again, alternatives and dropping these hints. So the idea of the challenge of how are we going to talk about it and create this beautiful chemistry and continue it throughout our relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if he is able to, to at least step into the awkwardness and take emotional risks and try some of these things, um, he's going to make changes and he's going to, some big things are going to happen. He's going to start getting more confident. How do you get confident? Repetition. You do it again and again. Yeah, that's right. Practice. And, and, and she will start getting more erotic in her thinking because where is eroticism? It's right here. Yeah. It's inside the head. And so she's going to have freedom then to start thinking about even these stages. I do have a PDF on self-pleasuring for men and for women. I have one on setting up the boudoir. Um, All of this is great because it gets your brain thinking about and anticipating because I like to talk about, or I encourage, what's your intention for this lovemaking time? What is it that you'd love to have happen? Mm -hmm. And if you can express that, look, We have 20 minutes before we both have to leave for work or 20 minutes before I know you want to start getting dressed before you're going to walk out. Could we lay in the bed? We could still keep our clothes on, our jammies on, whatever, but touch anywhere we feel like it. Would you be willing to do that with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Or how about we both uh, get naked before we're going out to dinner? We've got 30 minutes and I won't mess up your hair. I'll take your glasses off. And I know your makeup's perfect, so I'll be really careful. Uh, could we just body to body be naked for the next 30 minutes? I'm helping her understand. I'm, I'm going to give her plenty of time because women need more time to get ready, get the, take more details along with them and um, get out the door, whatever it is. Whereas he's always thinking about sex anyway, and he's willing to push the envelope right up five seconds before he has to throw clothes on and leave for work. That's right. but, but she's, you know, want to get, she needs yeah. to keep her hair right in her makeup. The dinner's coming. I love that. It, it creates so much safety for a yeah. woman. I, I wonder how often women are like, uh, it sounds nice, but I don't want you to mess up well, my day. Right. <laughs> or or right. really like it can kind of have a, an irritated response because yes. we're also unconscious that they're unconscious of of the effort, the time that we need yes. in order to feel we're ready to step mm-hmm. out the door or ready to get or under sex. the covers. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of circling that we yes. do in order yeah. to get to each stage. So I, I also love the piece about transitions because I think transitions are really important that we transition into each stage, that we have a chance for our depth of presence to catch up to what we're doing. You know, I, 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 uh, there is this, um, I think it's Sherry Winston who says we have premature penetration (laughs) issues in our culture where we're all in a rush to get it up and get it in and get it off. And we're doing a disservice to the pleasure that we're missing out on. We don't even realize just how much is being left off the table. And I, I think, you know, your system is, can solve that. Yes. And it, ge- it gives uh, a place to work with even stages. Cause I will have guys stay- say, 
well, I can make it up to stage 3B or they'll, they'll actually use it. And it helps them find the language because I also like the, lang the language of Yoni. They can use Yoni. And if they want to use pussy, that's fine too. Yeah. And, and I feel privileged that they will ask me very specifics, but it gives, mm -hmm. gives both of us a common ground. So it gives him and his partner a common ground on how can we work this? And one of the practices I give is, um, you know, take my stages and work on it. Take, take whatever I've given you and work on it together. Mm -hmm. Watch the, watch my videos together. Th those can be rituals and places to talk about. And then I ask them to pick out uh, even B rated uh, credit movies, that are sexy or might have a really hot scene in them. Mm -hmm. I, I know the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, her last scene with Lenny Bruce. I mean, it was so subtle, but it was so hot and it was mm -hmm. really cool. And she had a, a corset on and she had all the sexy mid-century underwear on it was yeah pretty cool so you know even using very something you don't have to pay for expensive porn you know there's a way you can and another fun thing is to turn the sound off of a, a b-rated or the 50 shades one of those mm -hmm. turn the sound off and make it your own documentary and, and talk about it oh she's doing oh she didn't like them oh man no look mm -hmm. at her. she's switching up now she's mm -hmm. taking control now okay that's a great way to learn each other's sexual language too, to really hear your partner kind of be like, oh, I'm, I'm noticing this in this scene right now and learning the words that they use. Yeah, yeah or, it's, I can imagine that it's helpful when you don't have a language or when it's been embarrassing the idea of talking about sexuality. Like, yeah. I think when you're really new into making the choice to learn about intimacy and you have a lot of conditioning, um, from your culture, your neighborhood, your religion, your parents, your family of origin. There's all sorts of reasons why we would have discomfort or sensations arise when the conversation of sex happens. And it does, it gets a constriction in your throat. You know, it's really easy to kind of clamp down. So to be able to have something visual, um, like um, uh, something on YouTube that's educational to go, okay, so this is what I felt. These were the sensations that happened in my body when this part came up. Um, can start to normalize the communication of sexuality. I mean, I think the three of us have been in this work for so long, it's we're so comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that there's a really beginning awkward stage and just have so much self-compassion if you find yourself hesitating. If you're um, the partner who's leading the dance, you yeah. know, because... Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, lack of confidence and hesitation. And I imagine that some of the obstacles these men might face is transitions into the next stage. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, like, how do I know it's going to be okay? And afraid to ask and their own throat gets closed. Mm -hmm. um, is that common? Yeah. And she also can tighten up and go into a thought or a thread of a history or a historical thing. Sure. And I teach them just pause and hold mm -hmm. her hands. And the right hold is across the back, parallel to her shoulders, and in the center of her back. And if you're laying down, she kind of tucks her arm up here and she puts her other arm around you. But that's a very bonding hug, either at the back of the neck or the, uh, across the top of the shoulders and the center of the back and pull her in and give her words like, we're okay. Everything's good. Keep going. I've got you. Things yeah. are good now. You're safe. I'm here with you. Any reassuring you can do. Yeah. But the first step is just pause if she freezes and just hold, just be with her. Yeah. That, that itself is healing. And then going on from there. I was going to say another big challenge is men don't really understand that women are not taught to say what they need or want. Mm -hmm. And now men aren't either, but with sex, you know, it's their appendage is right. It's out there. They, they actually masturbate in the womb. Mm -hmm. And yeah, our culture normalizes male se sexuality and it does not for women. Yes, so yes. we are taught to turn ourselves into pretzels to try to be whatever it is we think they want us to be, but we also do it silently and it's not always our truth. So that can be very confusing. And then we get resentful and right. we're like, why can't they read? Why can't he do it right for me? And I'm teaching men to say, how would I know when she says things like that? Right. How would I know? Um, because then, then it's her job to, to start informing or understanding. She has to speak. And yeah. He also struggles with that. But like I said, he's a, it's a little more direct and there's a way that he's got to accept 
if he wants really good hot sex, that, that it does fall on his shoulders to go ahead and lead and to give her the information about sex and bringing her in the sex realm, just like it's her job to bring him into the emotional realm. Because men need women for that emotional connectedness. Mm-hmm. And vice they're versa. hungry for it. They're actually hungry for that emotional connection. Yes. They need, yeah. the, need some leadership around that. Yeah. And so, so what would you say to men who do have a woman who has a level of consciousness where she is able to bring him into the emotional realm, but he's still afraid. It feels very vulnerable to him. It feels like, um, you know, high risk. Yeah. High risk. Well, because men, when high emotions come up or strong emotions come up, they move out, they move away from it. That's their natural because primitive cave men, you know, had to think on their feet and protect the brood. That's what they were, you know, provide, protect, procreate. I mean, they had to, so that's still in there and women with high emotion, you know, move in. We want to, Oh, wow. What's up? You know, what did I do? But I want to know, you know, Mm -hmm. the guys. So, um, I, help her understand that it is her job to bring him into empathy now guys come kicking and screaming because if they don't think it's important or they don't get it um you have to stay with it and keep explain and explain why that's so important to you so that he can come into the empathy realm and feel and understand that for you and it's not a one and done that's going to be continuous that no, this is important for me. Well, I don't know why it should be. It is. Yeah. Well, you know, and sometimes it gets a little testy there. So he needs to think about patience, right? Okay. Breathe, which is one of the, that's actually probably the top technique. If you want to know a sex technique, it's patience. Mm -hmm. It's being able to move slowly and get there. Yeah. Speaking of that, I, imagine that some men may have difficulty in their sexual response by waiting you know so long like that period of like okay we're going to wait for penetration until she's at an eight or a nine um do they is there anxiety that arises around maintaining an erection is there anxiety that arises around being so excited before that happens that they uh, end up ejaculating or climaxing before they get to that stage yeah. What are those obstacles that you notice people face? Uh, yeah. So before I answer that, so Willow, did I answer your question earlier about the emotional? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So um, now men can lose their erection at any time. Mm-hmm. So it's important to figure out how to kind of play with that and be collaborative with her, like even help her. If you could hold me like this and you could rub me like this, or if you could let me work on myself and bring myself back or how about we start over and I like changing positions if you're starting over again because everybody has times when their performance drops that's just sort of a fact if he understands that he's taking them both on this infinity figure eight move through the stages he's going to find himself turned on by her being turned on we know that men love seeing a woman orgasm they like watching it they get so much from it and they get so much from seeing a woman they care about get really turned on Mm -hmm. that's completely hot for them so uh, the drops don't necessarily have to be because of patience they can but often it's patience with himself and learning how to breathe and come back into his body because men again are from here up very big on staying in their head too and moving back down and giving themselves self-kind messages. This is okay. You'll be all right. Yeah. And, under, and understanding women's reaction to that, because women can feel very responsible, like, oh, I didn't do sex right. I wasn't sexy enough for you. I didn't move right to keep you, you know, and for him to understand um, that she might be overly <laughs> responsible mm-hmm. and she can, she can even get very uh, snarky and uptight because she's taking full responsibility. What? I wasn't good enough type thing. And, right. and th- so helping him put that into perspective. So um, men do ejaculate too soon. And what's too soon? It's sooner than you want. Right. And so that, that happens to many men. And I recommend as you're practicing self-pleasure or partner pleasure that you practice coming up to the edge so you're edging more. Because edging gives um, either party more sense of control it's not exactly a control thing that you can do with an orgasm 
but it gives you greater ability to navigate and move with your sexual response. So if you're getting excited and you stop to short, you pull in the Kegel muscles, which is what edging is. Mm -hmm. So you stop the flow of pee, whether you're a woman or a man, and you're pulling back. And if you do ejaculate too soon, there are a couple of simple techniques. One of them is to put um, your fingers or hers or yours around hers, around your member, around your penis, and press very hard from the top down. And usually towards the end of the shaft, closer to the very end, the tip, it's more sensitive. And sometimes right where the frenulum meets is a great place to press. Another pressure technique is putting a finger over the end of the penis so you can't have any ejaculate come out as you're squeezing down on the penis. Mm -hmm. And then you're teaching your, your uh, reflexes uh, this new response as well. And then there's a, um, an adage in psychology, you gotta do something 21 times before uh, the, the dentist The brain right? makes uh -huh. a habit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so that's, and, and if you um, are needing more than that, that's, it's great to work with somebody or to read about it. I do talk about it in my PDF as well um, on self-pleasuring, um, but begin practicing on yourself solo. So you start enjoying your body, getting in touch with what's going on inside your body. What are you feeling? What are you picking up? And notice when you breathe differently, what happens to your penis and the way it reacts. Mm -hmm. Notice about the thoughts. I like not using porn as much as possible and self-pleasure so that you're relying on yourself because you take yourself with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't take porn with you everywhere. You might have a sort of a memory of something in porn that's a turn on, but you always have yourself. And that's something you can conjure up. What is it that feels really good to you? And a lot of deservingness me um, messages to the self. Yeah, there's a lot of studies that show the importance of keeping your imagination robust in the self-pleasuring. And what porn does is it robs you of being able to cultivate your imagination. And therefore, it can begin, porn can begin to numb out some of those erotic sensations. You start to get into a habit and into a loop, which mm -hmm. makes it even more difficult. All sorts of things can arise. So I think that's good wisdom. Willow, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, um, you know, also, I love how you frame that you can take yourself anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and there's also this erotic nature that we all have as human beings, like we, we come from nature, we are part of nature, it's all within us. So when you start to discover your own erotic energy in your body, um, and use your imagination. It's like you start to find these different places in your body, like that mimic the ocean, that mimic the trees, that mm -hmm. mimic the valleys and the seas. And you start to have not only a more um, intimate bond with your own sexual energy, but also with the earth at large. And we know the earth is the great Pachamama, so the Almighty Ma, right? So then when we have that relationship with that within our own bodies, especially as men, then we have this new reverence for the feminine. It's really a beautiful practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I wanted to comment on two other things that uh, porn can offer tips and ideas, and it can also help if somebody is really, um, let's say one partner wants a, pra wants a practice of oral sex and the other doesn't. If you watch some of the techniques, especially if you watch between same sex partners, it can help a heterosexual partner better understand it and perhaps not make it so um, a male masculine thing or a female issue. And there's, um, there's something that happens with that. Now, the other thing, like I, I tend to not recommend porn, but more of the just the movies that are out that are either X-rated or soft X-rated, et cetera, PG. And pick up tips and ideas that you'd like to practice or try. Oh, that looks like fun. You know, I'm not, I'm not into the chains, but you know that, yeah, that blindfold and those restraints, like those handcuffs look like fun, you know, kind of get you talking and thinking about it and get your brain imagining, okay, well, what would I say? Tonight, if I were going to pick for the beginning of our lovemaking tonight, what would I tell my partner that I'd really like to? That's fun. That's a fun thought. That's a fun thinking. That's a mm -hmm. great daydream. I wanted to pick up on one other 
thought I had to, because we talked about women and um, can they get what they want in sex and from men. Men also have a very similar, but it's a little twist on it, which is we have to accept what we get. Mm. And, and, you know, that's that, settling. Is that what you're referring to? They don't really get to get what they really want. They have or, to settle. Or, or um, what's, yeah, how, yeah, how would they get more? Um, you know, because, uh, gee, they might be seen as uh, aggressive or they might be seen as argumentative. Or mm. So, so um, you know, it's very important for you as a man to say and stand in what you want and not leave desire. the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can say it straight. You can say it evenly. That's not aggressive. That's assertive. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a way to for, for men to... Um, express their desires without scaring a woman without all these sort of emotional i need to get this from you at the certain time frame it can that can be the pressure on the relationship that doesn't feel right so i think there's a way of bringing it in from a more curious place of like you know i I was imagining this, or I saw this somewhere and it really kind of lit me up. Like it got me reeling. It got me going. And I, I think it would be so fun to try that with you and no pressure, just only if you want to. And, you know, mm -hmm. just wanted to th let you know, like where my desire lies. I really want to encourage the listeners to stand in a place of holding safe space for your partners to be able to express their desires, mm -hmm. that, it, that you are the safe person that they can talk about their desires with. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make it your responsibility to fulfill that desire. But when you make space for their desires to be okay, and you don't shame them or make them feel weird or gross or bad, then there's an intimacy and a trust that opens. I mean, my partner could say, God, I bet your mouth would be so awesome right now. Boy, would I would like to feel that. And I can say, oh, my God, it would. My mouth is so hot and so wet and so warm. It does feel good. I'm not in the mood right now, but tell me more about that desire. You know, like close your eyes, imagine it right now, you know, and, you and it builds the anticipation. It. You, yeah, I don't have to be offended. I don't have to be mad. I don't have to do any of that stuff. I can go, yes, tell me more, honey. What you else know, would that, and, what else would feel good? <laughs> and you used a very good verbal technique, by the way, for the guy to leave out words when he's being engaging sexually with a woman he's flirting yeah i can i can remember when your hands were in that place last mm. night that wow that mm. was hot so he doesn't fill in he lets her fill in that's attractive to it that's the way you want to text that's the yeah. way you want yeah. to speak mm. and then yeah. let her and keep leaving blanks but building on it like what you were doing but, i like mm. that yeah. Yeah, well, we're just starting to wind down on time. I have one more question for you, though. And that is, how do you support partners exploring dirty talk if they're kind of shy about it? Do you have any tips for our audience regarding dirty talk? Yes. Or pillow talk? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I recommend that you set up intimacy chats weekly in a neutral space. Um, another practice is to do them every day at dinner just a few minutes of exchange but the idea is to do it in a neutral environment not in the bedroom not in high emotional um not when somebody's just walked in the front door but you know when when you're seated and in really a very neutral and start out by using a lot of words to get into the topic if you know your partner is tentative or very shy. So you want transition, which means add more words. Honey, I really want us to start chatting a little bit about our romance. I'm very curious about what's romantic to you mm. and maybe what it is that turns you on and doesn't. And I want to share with you what words mean to me, what some important words are. And I'd like to know your words for, you know, how we fool around and we talk about I'm my members, this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and, and I tease you about Louise and we have our mm -hmm. own inside little funny stuff. Well, I think it would be really great if I can say more. And I saw something on a show. In fact, you might even have a little clip mm -hmm. of a, a movie. 
mm-hmm. and and show it. And it, it could be even something funny. It could be from Seinfeld or something. You know, right. it doesn't have to be. Um, there was a really funny um, oh, clip from Curb Your Enthusiasm mm-hmm. where somebody had a Tourette's mm-hmm. and they started it. it I had tears running out of my eyes. It was so funny, <laughs> so, but, but it's, you know, and humor, women love you. So if you, if yeah, you can really play with it mm-hmm. and, and also if you can explain to her, you know, it's all sex. Mm-hmm. This is, all, I yeah. mean, I might tell you that, that you're hot and that, that I, I want to you do this but, and do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but, but it's all sex. So, so I want to know when I use certain words or what words you, you can, we can use to each other. So I'm kind of, I'm moving through a lot here but I'm yeah. using, okay. So that's the gist. And the first time you talk about it, it won't no more than 10 minutes, just kind of keep it brief, mm-hmm. but set up a regular way to chat weekly. That's ideal. It's very hard for couples to implement it or even do it nightly. And if you do it nightly, I like this little ritual about this was really, really sexy for me when you did this. And what I, what I would like less of, or what is hard for me to tell you, I want different is this. So you're saying Absolutely. one thing you love and one thing that you'd like differently. Yeah. yeah. Less of, I mm, like yeah, the framing smart. of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and always word things in terms of positives. What I, I want more of this. I want softer. I want slower. I want gentler. I want more words from you. I want to hear how you like. I want you to tap on my shoulder when you're having a, so it's a positive rather than, um, I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to please you. Or you never tell me what, you know, you don't, uh, you, you don't tell me which way to move or where I'm supposed to start. Okay. I'd like to know where to start. Um, you confuse me becomes I'm confused, but I want to please you help me out here. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of I statements. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Lots of oh. just um, lots of helpful tips and suggestions. Beautiful. Mm. Dr. Yeah. Nancy. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You. Nancy. Oh. <laughs> Such a pleasure to sit with you and to just learn from you. And really, this framework is just so fabulous. It's really super helpful, and not just for men, but this is totally applicable for women as for well. For everyone. Love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah Thank really. you. Thank you. What a blast talking with both of you women. I mean, just you know, so open and this conversation was so rich for me. So, you know, I was at a certain point, I was thinking, wow, I'm with my peeps. I'm yeah. With- <laughs> yes. yes. Let's talk sex. Yes. I love it. <laughs> everything about it and everything in between. <laughs> Tell us about your gift. I think it is the highlight of these, um, of this framework you gave us today, right? Yeah. I- I'm going to give you um, a PDF on my five stages and I label it my cheat sheet. Cause you mm-hmm. can look at it and lay it next to the bed, pick it up. Wait, where am yeah, I? What stage am I on? <laughs> but don't worry that you, it's overwhelming. Cause I've got a lot in it, even though I call it a cheat sheet, but start just picking up an idea that you can put into use tonight. Try something right away. As soon as you can, even on your own body, mm-hmm. just see what, what comes to you that resonates with you or what, Oh, you go, Oh, I never really thought about that being sensual before that would make sense moving into that. And then moving. I love that. You know, everyone pick that up. What's important is that you choose something that's actionable because that's what's going to help you have embodied knowledge of something. If you keep it intellectual you'll, and you don't apply it, you'll never get the chance to feel mm-hmm. like how powerful the transformation and how beautiful oh. the pleasure gets to expand into. So the great distinction and advice, actionable. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. So much love. Okay. All right. Now, our favorite part, the dish. Sex Reimagined with Dr. Nancy Moonstar. Yeah, she was such a pleasure, such an honor to sit with. And what a cool um like journey she's come up with for men I love how she really supports men in this realm because they don't have a lot of role models growing up around sexuality so yeah and and that she really has created a process for them to go a little slower Mm -hmm. so that they can actually also land in their body and be really aware of their 
experience and their partner's experience, I feel like her format of like conversations to penetration really allows us to be a process. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to experiment with the formula a little bit with one of my clients that I feel like is struggling and could just use more of a method, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I have a client like that as well. And it, you know, it's like, I think men, well, we all grew up in this masculine <clears throat> paradigm of learning where it's like step one, step two, step three, step four. Yeah. And so we learn in a linear way. Um, once we've learned something, then we can like morph it and jump around yeah. and do that kind of stuff. But to learn in this linear way, I think is really useful, especially if somebody maybe has been married for 25 years and then their wife passes or they get a divorce and then they find themselves in their, you know, 60s or 70s trying to figure out dating again. This is such a useful formula. Yeah, you know, and I, I was as I was sort of thinking and about it, I've got um I've got this product where it's a six and six. I think you and I have talked about, you know, playing yeah. with that a little bit. And so they get, you know, six couple sessions and then six solo sessions and they can mix up who wants to have the solo sessions. If they want to split it even or two and four or whatever. One uh -huh. takes all of them. Yeah. And I was noticing when working and so I'm Obviously, this is Nancy's method, and so there's probably so much more to it. I and mean, we yes. just touch some of the little... We trends. got the outer layer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what I'm really looking forward to is just kind of playing with this step-by-step -step process with a couple so that she's also on board and understands yeah. that there is that the, they're going to be experimenting with sort of a seduction process uh -huh. and to just see what it feels like to take this a little bit slower, to move into it, to realize that there is... Um, a process that they both get to engage in and then make it their own. And also, once you do learn maybe this more linear thing, because I think when we have a map, we feel a little safer. We feel like something's got our back. We feel like we know what to do next. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so there's one part of our system that I think gets comfort from that. Even though chances are your best experiences are likely going to be a little bit out of order. Right. As you sort of play with what works and exactly. everyone's body's going to be a little bit different and every couple's going to be a little bit different. But I'm looking forward to, to, you know, taking it on a little bit of a road trip and seeing what happens. Yeah, exactly. And did you check out her gift yet? The cheat sheet? No, I'm excited to grab that, though. Yeah, Actually, it's great. It today. <clears throat> yeah. It's all kind of laid out, a little bit more information nice. about each one of the stages. So it's a really generous gift that she's given everyone. And, you know, it explains a little bit more about the conversation piece and the ritual piece. You know, I think that word ritual could potentially trip some people up, but it's about making um, mundane, you know, day-to-day -day things more of a ritual. And in the dating realm, you know, making, um, like going out and having a drink, making it more of a ceremony or of a sacred sort of act rather than just like, hey, let's go grab a beer, you know? Yeah. Another way that I would maybe define it is it's making something special, making yes. something ordinary special, you know? I it's loved kind your of like... example of the toothpaste. Yeah. You're right. Like, put the toothpaste on for your partner, and then it's right there for them when they go to brush their teeth. You so know? Sweet. <laughs> it's, so sweet. it's kind of like putting down a cloth, um, um, uh, tablecloth down for dinner, yes. and having cloth napkins for dinner. You know, you yes. might not do it every night, but isn't it nice when you get to bring those things out? Yeah, kind of a little more trouble. You gotta wash everything, but yeah. um, it's better for the environment. <laughs> and it's sweet, you know, you can, you kind of have this feeling of going, oh, we're doing something special tonight. Yeah. You know, we're lighting candles and, yeah. you know, just doing those little extra touches <clears throat> makes your partner or the guests and yourself feel like we're celebrating something. Yeah. And really when you ritualize intimacy in any form, whether it includes sex or nakedness or any of that doesn't matter, but intimacy, the connection with another person, when you bring um, some kind of sacred or ceremonial aspect to it, the simple act of lighting candles or incense or music, you know, bringing the senses to life. It, it creates so much more. It allows both nervous systems to drop into a more receptive state. 
And then you can really receive the other person so much more. And that leads to the next one, which is touch. You know, she talked yeah. about different kinds of touch, just regular old like affection touch. And then there's sensual touch. So there's different levels and layers. And in Tantra, we teach all kinds of different layers. Yeah, I had never quite labeled it quite that way, you know, where you have this non-sexual affectionate touch, and then you have the sensual touch, and then you have the sexual touch. It's kind of interesting to break it down mm -hmm. like that. Uh, yes, you right. start with that, you're coming in, and you're just sort of holding, and yeah. you have an embrace, and maybe spoon, and it's all about comfort and soothing and coming to the present moment. And then that sensual touch is like elongating, touching the sides of the waist, the mm. length of the leg, the <laughs> length of the neck. And I sort of think of it as like so those secondary erogenous zones. And yeah. for women, that's really important because it really helps when you start to touch us from the extremities in, instead of going straight for you know, tits the and genitals. clits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it's don't go to tits and clits. It's not your first move, guys. Especially not with your fingertips, please. Yes, or <laughs> twisting the nipples. Like don't start with oh, that. God, it's like you, no. you ease into that. And that's yeah. only after you, you know, feel the waist, the side of the boob, the length of the body, that's the, right. the neck and the face. It's like don't go straight for those yeah. primary, primary erogenous zones. We need a slower approach and we will be hungry for those areas to be touched. Yeah. If you don't touch them immediately, that's right. Let build up that anticipation so that we crave it. And you'll know when we're ready because we'll start to arch. We'll move. Right. We'll move our body in a way that puts those parts more really, out, really more available. available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sherry Winston and her um, free gift. Be sure to catch that one because it's so good. Um, she talks about like women being yin. And so in order to access the yin, you need to come from the yang, from the external perimeter, mm -hmm. more closely to the yin, which is exactly what you're saying. Men tend to be in these yang bodies. And so, um, you know, it's, it's easier to just like go straight to the center of them because they have that already like energy coming out. So it's very much an energetic thing, depending on... Um, what body you're in. And if you don't identify with either men or women, there's often um, a place inside of you that can switch and kind of go back and forth. And, and even for a woman or a man, sometimes women are just like, hey, let's do it. Like, let's get it on yeah. now. I don't need all the- If gluing. she's already prepped and primed and she's yeah. been- Because there's a way that from, and, and this isn't so much, I'm also, okay, Leah, don't, don't spin off before you finish one thought. Right, got it. Okay, so- there's uh shit now i forgot okay i'm gonna skip the first time i'm gonna go to the second thought because my brain just went that fast uh -huh. um ah shit now i forgot both <laughs> <laughs> too it's much thinking good. about the thinking the yang that ever happened and the yin. oh yeah all the time and then i'm like oh, i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> yeah so like the yin and the yang i would love for you to comment about this if you're uh, a man and let us know your age because i'm curious if this is a generational thing or not uh, one of my mentors would say, you know, you can just go straight for the primary erogenous zones on a man's body. Just go ahead and go straight for the cock. They kind of want you to hurry up and get there anyways. I'm like, huh, because I don't know that's necessarily true all the time. I think guys don't necessarily want your hand right under their cock, whether they're hard or soft. I mean, maybe if they're hard, they're into it. But if they're not hard yet, sometimes they need a slower approach too. They also have performance anxiety. Yeah. And so if they think their body's supposed to be ready and then you land somewhere and we all have different ideas in our mind about what we think someone is expecting. That's right. Or what yeah. we think they want. And so right. that can add pressure to somehow be more ready than you are. So my question for the audience is, what's your preference? Do you like to build anticipation? Would you prefer your partner to come from the extremities into the sexier zones, warm it up a little bit? Or are you kind of like, hey, come on, you're taking too long, just get to the goods. Yeah, you know? so, so if you identify with a male body, let us know your age 
and what your preference is. Yeah. Do you like to get straight to it? I think it is an age thing because testosterone levels go down as you age. And so men tend to step more into their femininity, their nurturing self, this mothering side of them becomes more prevalent as they get older. Um, whereas if they're, let's say, you know, 22, uh, their testosterone is like, it's all about the cock. So I right. do think it's an age thing. Yeah. And their mind does have more thoughts about the whole like the visualization of penetration yes. and tits and ass and like all that stuff is walking by them all day long you know right, in their right. mind it's right there yeah. and I know that's true for a lot of older guys too I've got many older clients who still have sex on the brain like they did when they were in their 20s yeah you know? definitely uh so different strokes for different folks and our libido what's your favorite stroke <laughs> <laughs> let us know that too <laughs> yes um I uh I was thinking about the yin and the feminine being more integrated in a man as he goes into his silver years, you know, yeah. like those really those king years. What I notice in men as they start to feel that nurturing part of them become more important, it's really about legacy. You know, they want their wisdom to be appreciated and sought after. And it's meaningful for them to sit down and have those longer conversations with their kids or their grandkids or their best friends. You know, they've got more time. They've yeah. got more space. Yeah. And so now they want to be able to share all the things that they've collected over their life and, right. and pass that on in a meaningful way. And one of the things that Alison Armstrong pointed out to me in one of her classes was how because a man's oxytocin levels go up, as he gets older, it more matches the oxytocin levels in a younger woman. Right. So we see a lot of older men and younger women together. Mm -hmm. And we often, I think we can be a little, Judgy. not very generous in our assumptions about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but there's some biological things going on. I mean, A, her eggs yeah. are more viable. His body's going to respond to that because he yeah. still has sperm that can keep the process going mm -hmm. and the oxytocin levels are a better match and right. so we don't have to take it always so personally sometimes there's bio biology at foot and at play yeah. that's driving mm -hmm. some of our actions absolutely yeah so the last two stages she talked about were the sexual touch and penetration so she really drew this beautiful map of how to go from conversation to penetration yeah. we've kind of covered all of that but then uh, you know one of the things we talk about and teach in tantra is when it comes to penetration if especially if you're with a new partner it's always nice to ask permission and it doesn't have to be verbally sometimes it can just be with your eyes but um verbally it works too just like yeah. is it okay to enter yeah um are you ready for me to enter entering yeah. being okay there's lots of ways to um ask for consent without yeah. it being breaking the mood or seeming awkward i think that takes practice yes and um if we normalize it and just make it a part of things yeah. then you don't have to be filled with doubt and That's I actually right. think it's really important if you haven't asked for consent with your long-term partner in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. It can be really moving yeah. to say, hey, baby, are you ready? Uh, yeah. And, okay. you know, one of the sexiest moments I can recall when a man asked for my consent was just with his eyes. You know, it was just we're so in each other's eyes and it was like. Uh, you yeah, know, and there it yes. was. <laughs> yeah, because you can have this really powerful moment with someone, and especially if you're right near the gate. That's you know, right. It's like then you take yeah. this pause moment, and, and you, you check in with, with each other with that little nod of the head. You know, uh -huh. it really can say, "I'm ready. Are you?" Yeah. And then, it, and it's all can be said through the eyes. Yeah. Um, but when in doubt, always ask. Always use your words. Yes. Don't surprise somebody by just thrusting in, assuming that they're ready. I mean, that can get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. It doesn't and feel good. I would even go as far as to say, hey, how do you like, how do you like consent to be asked? What works for you? I don't want to misread anything. I can say words. We can look at each other. We can do a little nod. We can do a little tap. I mean, there's lots of ways to say I'm ready whether it is a tactile signal, an eye gaze signal, a nod signal, uh, actual words, because some partners, that's going to be really important to them. And yeah. it's really a considerate thing to go, hey, let's talk about this. Yeah, it's just, um, it shows respect. It shows honoring and 
you know, most men like to respect and honor their partners. And so um, if they can bring that into the equation, then they're actually doing that more fully. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Dr. Nancy, definitely check out her, um, her, her cheat sheet. It's really helpful, really useful, especially if you are getting back into the dating world after not being in it for a while. Really, her map is useful for all genders. Yeah. So, um, check I, And I really like if you've been in a sexless marriage for quite yes. some time and you're both kind of saying, okay, we want to do something about this. Yes. And it's kind of fraught with different feelings and resistances and maybe old stories and obstacles like this is such a gentle way of reapproaching this in a way you've probably never approached it before yeah so if your partner's been shut down to you for quite some time this is a, a process that allows them to find themselves too i think that this is a powerful thing this is the thought that i had earlier that i wanted to bring to the table i i think about how to use this with women especially women who haven't had the chance yet in their life to go, what does turn me on? What do I need? Their answer to what do you want, honey, is I don't know. You freaking figure it out. You know, it's, it's this unknown part and that can feel embarrassing when you don't know and you're all grown up and everyone else seems to know what they like or want and they feel tuned in and you don't it's hard to talk about it your yeah. throat really closes up when there's something embarrassing about not knowing yeah it's what a little you shameful think you should know right and so how can we make that learning gentle and normalize it and make it sweet and it's never too late to discover the fact that you're choosing you're saying yes even if you're uncomfortable and i think that this same model could be really great for people who find themselves at an older age having missed out on their sexual awakening and discovery mm -hmm. like it's never too late ever 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 never I've with a lot of middle-aged virgins and uh, they're getting to this point like if i don't do something about this i'm going to be left out completely i will have gone right. through this lifetime without being with sexual no sex, yeah. what am i missing and i better get to it and it can yeah. be daunting so know yeah. that there's hope and this is a great resource and i know that dr nancy would be such a great option therapeutically for anyone who's at any stage absolutely yeah okay love 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 thanks for tuning in if the hosts seem to know what they were talking about, that's because they do. Leah Piper is a tantric sex master coach and a positive psychology facilitator. Dr. Willow Brown is both a Chinese and functional medicine doctor and a Taoist sexology teacher. Don't forget, your comments, likes, subscribes and suggestions matter. Let's realize this new world together.